the gospel passage is Luke chapter 13. Um, Luke is, um, he's not unique to any of the gospels, that's for sure. But the, the nice thing about Luke that's being read during Lent is that he really takes us almost step by step to the cross. There's no, um, uh, like, taking a scene and just moving it. He, he ekes out a scene. He, he almost painstakingly, takingly carries us to the cross. And so we're in Luke, we're in chapter um, 13. Remember last week we had the temptations of, um, he really elaborates on the, Luke elaborates on the temptations and on, on Christ. We hear more about, um, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I will, more about the personality of Jesus Christ through Luke than we do through some of the other uh, Gospels. Although in the Gospel of John, we hear about the tenderness of Jesus. But let's go on and I will read and then we'll pray. Luke chapter 13, 31 through 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow and the third day. I finish my course. Nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Behold, your house is forsaken, and I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And your word is very sharp. It is alive. It is active. Father, we need to hear your word this very day. It's an ancient word, but so true for today. Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, instruct us through your word, Father. And may we learn, may we, may we be transformed more and more into the image of your dear Son as we hear the depth, the meaning of your word, Father. So we thank you and, and change our hearts, O oh God, to be more like Jesus. In your lovely name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, where we are, Jesus is walking to the, to the cross. And um, in Luke, he's, he's on the way to Jerusalem. He, he will not turn back and go to Galilee again. He's on the way to the cross. And, and we get that, um, that in this, and in this scene, my goodness, um, he's with Pharisees. You know, who were the Pharisees? Pretty much almost all of the Pharisees were his enemy. They were the ones that said, you are saying that you are the son of God. You are not the son of God. We are the ones that maintain the law, not you. What are you talking about grace? Why are you saying that you forgive sins? It is only God that forgives sins. The Pharisees were threatened by Jesus, and so they wanted to destroy him, get him out as much as they can. However, as we read here, at that very hour, some Pharisees, there were some Pharisees that loved Jesus, that heard him, that listened to him, and that were willing to obey him. And, in, and if we read in the in Acts of the Apostles, there were some Pharisees who became some of the first believers. So we never, you know, in all of Scripture, we don't, in all of our lives, really, we don't lump people together. There were some good Pharisees that wanted to know and, and be, be, be a part of Jesus and be saved by him. So going through some of this, this uh, passage where Jesus said, um, get away from him. Maybe at first when the Pharisee, you need to leave, Herod, Herod hates you. And maybe Jesus a little, this is where we're, re we're reading about Jesus, his personality. You know, he was human. Jesus was fully human. We cannot forget this. 
fully human. So he heard the Pharisees say, you need to leave because Herod wants to kill you. And he said, let me tell you, um, go, they say, go away from here. And then, then Jesus said, go and tell that fox. Well, fox, you know, fox to a Hebrew, it, were, it was a, um, a combative kind of terminology. Fox was someone that you held in, in contempt. So that's, you know, we, we don't necessarily want to hear that Jesus said, you tell that fox. Well, Herod was the son of Herod the Great. And we go back in history. Who was Herod the Great? When Jesus was born, he sent out a decree and said, you kill everyone in Bethlehem that's less than two years old. So Herod, Herod wanted to destroy the ministry that Jesus had. And so Jesus said, you tell that fox, I am not finished with my ministry. I am not. Um, I cast out demons and I perform cures today and tomorrow. On the third day, I will finish my course. Again, we're hearing predictions. On the third day, I finish my course. You all know what that means. On the third day, I will rise again. I will finish my course. I will have come and done everything my father told me to do for you, for the world. So there's predictions in here as well. Um, they, they wanted him to leave. The Pharisees did. The Herod wanted to kill him, to stop him in his tracks so he would not go and be the redeemer of the world. But Jesus said, no, I am going. Here's where we, this is one of the, the areas I, I just want to share with you, you know, with, with this passage. Jesus was fully human. He had the majority of the Pharisees wanting to destroy him, Herod wanting to kill him. Most of the Jews hated Jesus because he was, he was saying things that were blasphemous, like, like, I will forgive your sins. And, and there's no, you can't only God. And besides the fact, your hands are dirty. You, you didn't obey the Sabbath. In, in Jesus' humanity, we read later on where he cries over Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. If you had listened to me, I would have taken you all in under my wings. I would have shielded you. I would have raised you up. Jesus, and knowing that Herod, his life, Jesus' life was at stake. Not the cross, that was not at stake. Jesus' life was at stake by Herod, by the Jews, by many other people to destroy him so he wouldn't go to the cross. Jesus knew that the cross was looming down this Jerusalem road. He knew the cross was ahead of him. In his humanity, knowing the suffering, the pain, the humiliation, the, the fear, that, and being betrayed by one of his best friends. He knew all that was coming, but, and that was in his humanity. He knows that. But he was resilient. What if he listened to the Pharisees and they said, you leave now, Herod's on his way to kill you. Yeah, I gotta get out of here. He would not have finished his course. And then, then you know, then we, we read on, um, and then he said also, uh, where Jesus said, it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. Jesus, in his prophetic way, he had to die on Mount Calvary. He could not run away. He's telling his people, if I, if I leave and Herod, if I run away because I'm afraid of Herod, I'm not fulfilling prophecy. I'm going to go back up to Galilee where I'll probably be safe. And it says right here, a prophet cannot perish away from Jerusalem. So Jesus, he stuck to it. He stuck to it. He said, I will finish my course. And because he said that for us today, for us today, that Jesus said in Luke, I will finish my course. 
We are here as free people. We have salvation right now. But going on, here's, here's another. Jesus, heart. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a city where the temple was. Jerusalem was a city where, where the, the richness of the Jewish heritage was. And they wanted to kill him. And, and he longed for his people to come under, under his protective wings like a mother hand. And he said, I would have done this for you. His weeping nature, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I would have gathered your children. I would have gathered you, my people. But your house is forsaken. And then he, he ends up and saying, and I tell you, you will not see me until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We know that in two weeks from today, I believe two weeks, is Palm Sunday, when Jesus was coming into the city and everybody was just, He's going to save us. He's going to save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's kind of what Jesus meant here when he said that at the end of our passage. But what he also meant was when he comes again, all of earth will go. Blessed is he who has come again in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. He has come. What I want to share with you out of this passage How, you, if, I, if I ask you to raise your hand, that life is a snap. I hope nobody would. Well, well nobody's going to raise their hand, right? If I say, if somebody raise your hand, if, I, if you think that life is a snap, I don't think any of us could raise our hand. Is there joy in our life in spite of? Yes, there is. Life is tough. Life is difficult. We know that sometimes when we even speak of the Lord, the looks that we get, you know, you, you, you fool, you know, what are you saying? You prove it to me. You prove to me that, that Jesus Christ is going to take care of you. You prove it to me. I mean, I hear you have cancer. I hear that you, you, you know, you're about to lose your house. You prove it with Jesus. How, how strong are we in our Resolve that yes, I am his. I am his child. My life may be falling apart, but I know who he is. I know I am saved. I know I have a redeemer. I know where my end is. Right, my life really kind of stinks right now. But you know, I can keep walking. There is joy in my heart because I know that my Redeemer lives. He is living in me. I'm not alone. I can go forward. And I have the body of Christ to walk along with me. How resilient are we? Who, is, who dwells in your heart when stuff starts happening in our lives? Who is it? that undergirds us and say, you are not alone. I am with you. Last night when I talked to Susie and Brian, what, he was in horrible pain. And I'm not just putting the, 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 the flashlight on him. All of you, Peter's been through it. A lot of us have been through difficult situations. You know, she said, it could have been much worse. It could have been much worse. God's going to heal him, and he will be back. Are we able to, to declare those things? As, as Jesus said, when Jesus said, you know, he, he, he thought that Herod may be coming. He knew what was ahead of him at the cross. He knew his best friend, would, one of his best friends would betray him. But he said, I am staying until I finish my course. Can we even come close to say, we will stay, and we will believe, we will have faith, we will trust until I am called home. <clears throat> you know, we hear reports in, in, in Ukraine of people, families, 
families staying the course. I'm not leaving. I know that, and I hear words, I know the Lord is with us. I know Jesus will take care of us. Are we? How, how strong is he who dwells in you? How deep is your faith? How well do you know him? How well do we trust him to stay the course of life? One other thing from this passage where Jesus says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that, that the prophets stone and What about those in our lives who, who either have left the faith or whose faith is just diminishing or who seem to be very lost? Jesus, you know, he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. His people were, were abandoning him. And he kept going to the cross. Here's the point. Are there people that you know People that are in your family, children, friends, co-workers, that they seem to be totally discouraged, totally not wanting to do anything, totally out of hope. Are you willing to stay the course with them through prayer, daily prayer, Lord Jesus, their lives are in a shambles. Lord Jesus, I pray for them. Are you willing to stay the course with them, pray for them, even pray with them, visit them, be, be Jesus to them? Where Jesus, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, oh, oh, John, oh, John, almighty God, I lift up my friend John, that you would manifest yourself before him. Are you willing to stay the course and not to go, there's no hope? And it's just no hope. I give up. I'm going to just go play the altar. Are you willing to stay the course with, with those that you are you care for, that you long for them to, to see the redemption of the Lord in their lives? And are you willing to stay the course in your own life, no matter what? In Jesus' humanity, he stayed the course, he went to, went to the cross, and his reward was our reward. We're getting closer to the cross in, in, the, in the historic part of our journey with Luke. I'm not sure if we're going to be in Luke next week or not. We're getting closer to the cross. And part of Lent is for us to to look at Jesus' journey, his temptations from last week, um, his, his being threatened this week, and yet I will stay the course. I will stay the course. Can we stay the course? Can you? Do you know him? Do you know him deeply? Just hang in there with Jesus no matter what. May we pray for each other. May we, may we lift up each other before the Lord and say, may we as a body be strong and stay the course. And may those around us in this community, in our families, may we, may we look with eyes to see, you know, there are people out there. I need to make a friend and I need to bring them in. I need to stay with them spiritually, prayerfully, that they would know the redemption. This is where Jesus was, fully human. He did it. He stayed the course. He went to the cross, and he is our reward. As it says in the, at the end of this passage, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you who come in the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word, Father. Um, Lord, what, whatever was of you, Father, I ask that you magnify that in, in all of our hearts, Father. And if, if there was anything spoken from this pulpit that was not of you, Father, I ask that you be extracted and remove it as far as the east is from the west. But Father, may we may we know Jesus 
in a deeper, more personal way even, Father, from your word. And thank you for transforming us into his image, Father. And Lord, we, we bless you for who you are in our lives. And, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your cross, your death, your resurrection. And you are coming again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.